Comfrey is a staple in the permaculture garden because it is a natural fertilizer. It's a dynamic accumulator, which means that it is pulling up nutrients from way below, deeper than any other plant can access because their roots can go anywhere from eight to 10 feet below ground. This is a brilliant plant that can be used in your home garden. There's different ways you can use it from chop and drop to making your own comfrey tea fertilizer. And today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to do that. Hey there, this is Brie from Urban Gardening Canada and I garden in Ottawa zone five. And today I'm gonna to be taking you through the method of chop and drop and how to make comfrey tea fertilizer using your own home comfrey. Before we get into it, I wanted to touch on two different important factors when it comes to comfrey. You may see online that comfrey is a medicinal plant and so that could include putting it topically on your body or ingesting it. There will be no part of this video where I recommend you ever ingest comfrey. It can be very toxic to humans and so I do not recommend doing that. I am not a doctor, I am not an herbalist and so none of this video is going to be related to you ingesting any of this and I do not recommend it and I would never do it myself. The second is that there are two types of comfrey that you have available to you. There's the common comfrey, which you can buy seeds for, and then there's this comfrey here called the Bocking 14. And so this is a Russian variety. So you can see all the flowers that we have up here. These flowers are sterile, so they won't produce seeds. However, if you're growing the common comfrey, these seeds will spread and the comfrey will spread itself as well. I have my comfrey planted in a two foot by two foot garden bed here, and you can see how large this plant is. And if it was left to its own growth, it would literally take over the whole yard if I was growing the common comfrey type. And so I don't recommend you ever growing the common comfrey and only finding this Bocking 14 variety so that way it doesn't spread outside of your yard. Because the roots can grow 8 to 10 feet deep, you can't dig the plant up and the plant will grow from any piece of root and so it's really hard to take out if not impossible once it starts growing. If you do already have comfrey on your allotment or property and it is the common variety type, I recommend cutting off the bloom so that way it can't seed and take over your yard. And that's the best way that you can contain your comfrey while still being able to use it in your garden. So the reason that you wanna grow comfrey in your garden is because it's a dynamic accumulator. And what that means is that these roots that grow eight to 10 feet underground, they have access to nutrients that you're, the rest of your garden doesn't have access to. And it pulls them up from the roots and into the leaves of these plants and it stores the nutrients in the leaves. So there is a lot of nutrition that exists inside of these. Specifically, you'll have more potassium and phosphorus and there is some nitrogen in there. It is really beneficial for your garden and so you can grow your own fertilizer and that means you can stop buying fertilizer that you don't quite know what's in it and you can guarantee that you're making the best quality fertilizer for your food. So one of the benefits of comfrey having high potassium and phosphorus in it is that's really good for any fruiting plant. So this is your peppers and your tomatoes and eggplants, anything that puts out a fruit, the comfrey is especially good at making sure that your plant produces the flowers and the fruit. And so this is what makes it so valuable in your garden. Okay, so there are two different ways that you can make your comfrey. The first is the chop and drop method. And so what you're gonna do is you're going to cut the leaves off of your comfrey plant. I find that the leaves are better than the stem. So if you can find any of your bigger leaves, that's my preference. Uh, you're going to want to wear gloves because comfrey is very irritating on your skin, so I really recommend wearing gloves. And then once you've collected up all your leaves, you're going to cut your leaves up into small pieces and you're just going to place it at the base of your plants. Comfrey breaks down really quickly, so within a week these leaves are already going to be dried up and breaking down and they're going to feed the soil directly at the base of your plant. So it's a really great way to create a mulch for your garden that's also feeding the soil and your plant at the same time. The second method is to make comfrey tea and I just want to clarify this one more time. This tea is not for drinking, it's a comfrey tea fertilizer and so this is going to be added to water that you are going to water your plants with and so to make comfrey tea the first thing you need to know is that if you're making it in water which is the method I'm going to show you it smells really bad so you're going to want to make sure that you make it in something that has a lid you can make it in your 
watering can if you wanted to. If you want to make a small batch, you can make it in a bucket that has a lid on it. Or in my case, what I like to use is a rain barrel that has a spigot on the bottom of it and a lid on top. So to make comfrey tea, the equipment that you need is your comfrey plant, insect netting, and a bucket or a barrel to make it in. The insect netting we're going to use to make our version of a tea bag and that is where you're going to be putting the comfrey leaves and the stems. And so to make your comfrey tea you're going to cut up a bunch of your comfrey so this includes the stems and the leaves just take a bunch of chunks off of it you can actually harvest from your comfrey plant four times in the year so you don't have to worry about that and you're just going to hack up a bunch of the leaves and stems so once you're done cutting up your plant you're going to be putting them in the netting i'm using a insect netting bag that i bought off of amazon so i'll put that link below and so these are typically used to cover up any fruit bushes or fruit trees, but this actually works perfectly as a tea bag. And so you're going to either fill up one of these bags or put it inside of insect netting and tie it up into a bag. And so once you've filled up the bag, you're going to put it inside of your water barrel or your bucket. So there really isn't a ratio of how much water to comfrey that you need. It's up to you how strong you wanna make it and you're just going to drop that into the water and you're going to let it sit there for anywhere from four to ten weeks the comfrey leaves are going to break down fully so once they're done breaking down all that will be left of it is your insect netting or your bag so you don't have to worry about cleaning up a bunch of sludge which is really nice and as it's rotting it's going to smell really bad so this is why you want to have a lid on it because otherwise that smell is going to take over your whole allotment or your garden and you really don't want that smell around so as it is breaking down the water is going to change colors to more of a green tea looking color depending on how much comfrey you put to water it can actually turn into a very dark black color and so based on the, the darkness of your tea will depend on how much you need to dilute it. If you have a really dark green or black tea, you're gonna to wanna to dilute it for one part comfrey tea to 20 parts water. If it's a medium color, then you're gonna do one part of tea to 10 parts water. But if you start using your comfrey tea early within the first two, three weeks of making it, you're not gonna to have to dilute it at all as long as it's a nice light green tea color. You can actually just put it straight into your watering can and water your garden directly. You don't need to wait the four to eight weeks before you can start using your tea. You can actually start using it within a week or two. Not only will this give you a good idea of how strong your tea is, but it allows you to start fertilizing your plants sooner than later. So you don't have to worry about actually letting it sit for the four to eight weeks, it just comes to its best strength. Using it in a rain barrel is a really great option because that means you have a large amount of fertilizer for you to use across your whole garden for multiple weeks throughout the summer. Once the leaves have fully broken down, you can take that bag back out of your bucket or barrel and you can refill it up and start all over again. And that's what's so amazing about comfrey as a fertilizer and growing your own fertilizer. And that's everything for today's video. If you have any questions on making your own comfrey tea, let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.